Hello and welcome back to Whitney Alex Works recap of The Bachelorette Season 19, Episode 6. The Bachelorette cruise ship heads next to Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, where receiving a rose means a ticket to hometowns. Emotions are running high and an unexpected exit leaves one bachelorette in a difficult decision. Many contestants are sent home in this episode, all in the name of finding love. This episode marks a year of recapping Bachelor Nation shows at Whitney Alex Works, starting from Bachelor in Paradise's season 7 last year back in August, and all the way to this season of The Bachelorette. So thank you for tuning in, as I hope to continue to bring you more Bachelor Nation content in the future. Let's dive into episode 6. We begin this episode with a reflection of the journey so far. Host Jesse Palmer, who let's just say is giving all in his recruitment ads, telling women across the country to drop their boyfriends and sign up for the next season of The Bachelor. You have to give it to Jesse. He's trying something new for an almost 20 year show. Well, we see Jesse catch up with Rachel and Gabby, asking them both about their journeys so far, where both bachelorettes say that despite all the twists and turns, this is working for them. They both feel like they are falling in love, but since families are about to get involved, the journey for love is getting emotional and intense. And Gabby says she actually feels nauseous about hometowns, but it seems to be more about her upcoming one-on-one -on -one date with Nate. Gabby chooses Nate for her first one-on-one -on -one of week six, and there seems to be an ominous feeling lurking in the shadows. Nate and Gabby are seen walking down the streets of Amsterdam as Gabby confesses to the cameras that she is terrified to become a mother, knowing Nate has a young daughter and she feels she is not ready to immediately step into that role. As they sit on a bench, Gabby erupts into tears and tells Nate just as much, saying she can't move forward with him despite her growing feelings, citing that she is not ready to step into the role and have the responsibility of becoming a mother. They are both emotional, as Nate understands, and thanks Gabby for being honest. And again, this breakup is highly emotional, as it's just one of those situations that feels like it was both out of their control, and despite their growing feelings it just wasn't meant to be and Gabby then says goodbye to Nate leaving 10 men remaining overall and five left for Gabby Meanwhile, Rachel chooses Zach, his second one-on-one -on -one date with Rachel, the first back in week three, and they meet up in a field of tulips and greet each other with a kiss. They both have tulip fever as they enjoy their date together, taking Polaroid pictures, riding bicycles, buying wooden clogs, and some more kissing, this time in front of a windmill. And we know the reference of the windmill, a scandalous symbol in Bachelor Nation, bringing us back to Hannah Brown's season. But of course this is not fantasy suites yet and Zach and Rachel head to a traveling hot tub, this time placed in the middle of a tulip field where they connect further and kiss some more. Rachel and Zach are in a corny bliss where Zach is ready to introduce his family to Rachel as she feels like Zach could definitely be a contender for her final rose. The two head out for the nighttime portion of the one-on-one -on -one date and Zach and Rachel head to a beautiful museum filled with historical Dutch paintings and the two sit down to talk further. Zach opens up about his past relationships and opens up about his struggles with being unhappy and overweight, trying to figure out why he was so unhappy and he tells Rachel that he goes to therapy, which Rachel appreciates. They bond over therapy as then Zach tells Rachel that he is falling in love with her and they share a kiss. And then Rachel pops the question asking Zach if he will accept her rose which means a ticket to hometowns. And he of course says yes securing him the first spot for next week. Afterward they dance to a string quartet and enjoy the rest of the date together blissfully falling in love with each other. We then see Gabby tearful and upset about sending Nate home and she heads in to talk to her five remaining men. She tells them she sent Nate home and it has really affected her and she knows that despite their real and raw connection, it just wasn't meant to be. The five remaining men console her and Gabby is grateful for the comfort. She hugs everyone as she knows that each decision made is getting her closer to finding her partner. 
We next see Gabby and her men heading to the group date where things get interesting and pretty awkward fast. They have a sex date with a Dutch woman who is ready to talk about sex with leather and whips. The American men are all shy all of a sudden as they get questioned about sex and how do they feel about certain sexual acts. The goal of the men is to avoid the questions, which they do pretty well, but they don't get out of getting tickled with feathers and kissing with whipped cream. And don't forget about the hot wax as each man has their own safe word spencer's is the best with his being albuquerque and despite the awkwardness at the beginning gabby and her american men have a nice time together but just when things are going well another twist lands in gabby's lap before the after party jesse palmer knocks on her door and tells her that one of her men had to suddenly leave and it's none other than switching sides logan and all of the promos had him dramatically leaving for some unexpected reason but it's revealed that logan has tested positive for covid 19 and he is now leaving the show Jesse then tells Gabby for health reasons the after party is canceled and he goes and tells the other men just that and everyone is left confused and saddened and Gabby is disappointed hoping that she could have had more time with everyone before making a conscious decision about hometowns. But just like that, all the drama that Logan caused last episode and he is just gone all of a sudden never to be seen again. And, well, I guess that leaves nine men remaining all of a sudden. Four men left for Gabby, and things continue to get stranger on this season with unexpected twists and churns. We then head to Rachel's last group date, and they head to Edom, Netherlands, known for its cheese. Rachel loves cheese, and she has a silly and fun day with her four out of her five remaining men, and they have a nice time together. They taste test different types of cheese, but there is, of course, some competition afoot. Avon takes her away to kiss and talk about hometowns, and then Tino does the exact same thing right after him. And then it's time for a little more competition. It's time to crown the cheese king, but the men have to prove themselves by lifting cheese. And it comes down to Tino versus Ethan, and Tino ends up barely winning, but he does get named the cheese king of Edom. And Tino is feeling something he's never felt before, and it might be true love. He carries this intense feeling into the after party, but he might be imploding. Rachel and her group head back to the cruise ship where they spend more time together. And each man does his best to woo Rachel and secure the rose on the date. And it gets pretty intense as Tino tells Rachel that he is all in on her and shares in his confessional that he wants the validation and really wants this rose. But Rachel ends up giving the group date rose to Tyler, securing him the second hometown spot for Rachel. And this sends Tino spiraling. He sarcastically tells Tyler congratulations and storms off only to vent to a producer. And Ethan, Tyler, and Avon grow concerned with Tino's reaction. But Tino says that he is so sure of Rachel that his emotions are getting to him as he is struggling to keep his composure. Later, we see Tino apologize to Ethan, but he admits he is feeling emotions he has never felt before and it's getting to him. And things get even more real and it's now time for the rose ceremony. And let me just say that despite all the craziness this season with procedures, they have done a great job with ending the episode with a rose ceremony every time where other seasons have always left us on a cliffhanger. This rose ceremony throws another twist Gabby lets her men know that because of the limited time, she only feels comfortable handing out three hometown dates. She calls Eric first, securing him a spot. Then she calls Jason, and then finally she chooses Johnny, leaving Spencer, a 27-year-old graduate student, the odd man out. Eight men remain. On the other side, Zach and Tyler are safe for Rachel. She picks up her first rose and calls Avon first, and then she pauses and then calls Tino, securing him the last rose for hometown spots, which means Ethan, a 27-year-old advertising executive, is going home. Seven men remain, three spots for Gabby, and four for Rachel. 
Next week is Hometowns, where it seems like usual, some family members give the lead a hard time. And once you involve families, the relationship inevitably changes. Thank you for watching Whitney Alex Works recap of The Bachelorette Season 19, Episode 6. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe at Whitney Alex Works for more videos in the future. See you next time for Hometowns. Thank <laughs> you.